try not to walk around. Um, I'm told by Adam I need to stay in this area so we can keep the cameras properly kept. Um, welcome to Voyage Community Church. God, uh, it's, it's a blessing to be here once again. Thanks for coming on out today and spreading out so well and wearing your masks in here when you can. And I know it's harder to sing with masks on, so I get that. So we'll do our best to uh, keep safe and do that. But I uh, just want to draw your attention to a couple things. We have our first ever Zoom uh, book study this week on the book by John Grisham called Guardians, and uh, this will play really well with what we're going to talk about today uh, as well. So check that out. If you haven't already read that, we're going to connect on Tuesday night, and uh, we'll send out a Zoom sort of meeting request Tuesday, and we'll get together from 7 till about 8 o'clock, okay? So that's kind of our, our plan. It might not take that long, but we'll plan on 7 to 8 o'clock on Tuesday night. You can stay in your, your jammies, whatever you want to wear. Um, but uh, you don't have to come here to church to do that. So that's coming up very soon. Also, on Wednesday night, uh, from 3 o'clock till about 8 or 9 o'clock, we're going to be here at the church painting. And in lieu of that, we have an announcement that we want to make uh, regarding that. We need your help. And so you can see this picture here of the twins, um, Ivers and Dan, they're on vacation, yes. Uh, and they said, hey, Voyage Church, while we're out on vacation, please sign up and paint this Wednesday, the 19th, from 3 p.m. My twin is buying pizza. So the sign-up sheet is over there. Some of you have already said you're going to do and help that. We thank you so much for doing that. So we've got the colors figured out. We're just going to start painting the church, getting rid of these yellow walls, and making our way all the way up here to the front as well. So everything will match here very soon. So we may not get everything done on Wednesday, but we'll at least make a start and do our best. So again, they're going to buy us pizza around five or six o'clock. So if you want to come out and be part of that, we'd love to have your help. All right. With that said, I want to just open up with a passage of scripture to kind of become our invocation this morning. And it comes from Psalm 34. And it goes like this. I will praise the Lord at all times. I will constantly speak His praises. I will boast only in the Lord. Let all who are helpless take heart. Come, let us tell of the Lord's greatness. Let us exalt His name together. I think that's what we're going to do this morning. We're going to praise His name. We're going to exalt His name together. Let's stand now and do that. All right. Let everything that has breath praise the Lord. That flows unrestrained from your heart Canyons of mercy so deep I could never depart Father, your wonders are endless Open my eyes to believe Awake my soul Let everything that has breath Praise the Lord Praise the Lord, praise the Lord, with all of my heart, with all of my strength, with all that I have, I will sing, let everything that has breath, praise the Lord. faithfulness shines like the sun heavens on fire alive with the brilliance of love father your wonders are endless open my eyes to believe awake my soul 
Let everything that has breath praise the Lord. Let everything that has breath praise the Lord. Praise the Lord. With all of my heart, with all of my strength, all that I have, I will sing. Let everything that has breath praise the Lord. Thanksgiving on our lips, we enter your courts today. All our lives we freely give, awaken my soul to praise. With thanksgiving on our lips, we enter your courts today. All our lives we freely give, awaken my soul to praise. Let everything that Praise you for your faithfulness. Praise you for your kindness, for your mercy, for your grace, for your beauty, for all that you have done. We praise you that you are with us right now, that you care about us in all of your strength and glory and majesty. You love us. and You've sacrificed greatly to be with us. So we praise you for all of those things. Thank you for your spirit that you send to minister to us daily, to show us the way, to give us light, to comfort us in times of sorrow, in, in times of, of trouble. So we praise you for all those things, and we want to do that daily, as your word says, not just today together, but all time, at all times. So we thank you. Amen. Amen, 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 amen. Hope falling down like rain, love that I can't explain, peace that stills my soul. His place, life, even in the pain, it feels like coming home. Where the Spirit of the Lord is, there is freedom. I am free, amen. Where the Spirit of the Lord is, there is freedom. I Free at last, free. 
All right, let's take some minutes here in our service to pray for one another. If we can pray for you, we'd love to do that at this time. How can we pray for you this morning? All right, just also want to encourage you, if uh, God leads you to, we have a mailbox back there that's for your offering. We don't pass the offering plate right now, so uh, for safety purposes. So you can put your offering in that little mailbox. Some of you do. Some of you have been giving online as well, and that works awesome too. So just a reminder about all of that. Sometimes I forget all about it. All right. Um, I'm going to pray, and then we'll move right into what I want to share this morning. Father God, your message is, uh, I think, pretty clear this morning, and I just pray that uh, you would help me get out of the way and just let your message speak for itself today as we dig into uh, this this movie, these movies, and uh, see what you have to say through each of them. I pray this in Jesus' name. Amen. So for me, uh, it finally happened. Like I've been dreading this day. I never thought it would actually come in my entire life. And it finally happened. A few months ago, I humbled myself and I went to the store and I had to buy a pair of these. You all know what these are, right? These are reading glasses. And so how do I look? Distinguished, thank you. Um, Older, yes. Now, some of you are way beyond reading glasses. I get that. You guys have been wearing glasses your whole life, and uh, I'm sorry for that. For me, however, I've had like perfect vision my whole life, and the idea of having to wear glasses to read anything is just 
awful, right? Uh, here we are in the year 2020, a year we all want to forget, and here I am blind. I can't see things like I could use to see things. Now, I can see pretty well. I don't have to wear them here on Sunday morning to preach and teach from God's Word or anything like that. But, but I got to tell you, when the morning is, you know, the early mornings, when the light's really dim, and I'm trying to read my Bible or devotions or anything else, those glasses, they come in really, really handy. And I'm learning to like them a lot. Um, so that's what's happening in my life. Now, having said that, all this reminds me of some other areas in my life that I've been fuzzy <laughs> on when it comes to uh, these particular topics, and one in particular this morning. Some areas where things have not been very clear to me, and I'm hoping to shed some light on that this morning and bring some clarity to both myself and you as we talk about them. Now, as we begin this summer's edition of At The Movies, and this is kind of a thing that we've been doing for the last five years or so, uh, kind of building on this, I need to tell you that I'm tempted to jump over and around certain kinds of movies. Like, I don't want to preach on certain movies because of the fact that they're difficult to preach on, right? They're, they're not easy topics. They're something I would rather just steer away from completely. I love to preach Disney sort of stories to you, like the force will always be with you, and ending happily ever after, that kind of thing. I'd love for it to be funny because I love to laugh, and I'd love to laugh with all of you about certain things, and we'll do some of that as we move along in this series. However, this morning, the story is not one of those stories that causes us to laugh. This morning, as I mentioned earlier this week, is a double feature. Uh, these two movies depict a theme and a topic that captured the headlines, especially these last six months or so. Earlier this summer, I urged you to take some time and watch the movie Just Mercy. How many of you actually have seen the movie since then? A few of you, John and you, Jody, you guys watched it yesterday, right? Just Friday night, okay. Um, if you haven't seen it yet, my prayer, my hope is that after today you will go rent it, buy it, stream it, however you want to watch it. It's a really good movie. The acting in the movie is really top notch. But the message, the message of the movie is what's powerful about this film. So I would encourage you to watch this movie. So as is the custom here at Voyage Community Church, we want to show you a snippet of that movie by just showing you the trailer, especially for those of you who are not familiar with this movie. So let's watch this trailer. Tell me everything that happened. The first time I visited death row, I wasn't expecting to meet somebody the same age as me. From a neighborhood just like ours. Could have been me, mama. But what you're doing is gonna make a lot of people upset. You always taught me to fight for the people who need the help the most. Your life is still meaningful. And I'm gonna do everything possible to keep them from taking it. You don't know what you into down here in Alabama when you're guilty from the moment you're born. God, Mr. McMillan. We done here. Mr. McMillan, please. I was just about to give up when I got a call from a Harvard lawyer looking to start a legal center for inmates on death row. I was in before he even offered me the job. You the lawyer? Yes, ma'am. Thank you so much for driving all the way out here. Most lawyers barely make time to call. I can't believe you talked to all my people and said you want to fight for me. I did. It mean a lot. If you go digging in those wounds, you're going to be making a lot of people very unhappy. When people care about a thing that much, they'll do anything to get what they want. When I first learned about all of this, it was like looking at a river full of drowning people and not having any way of helping them. Hey. You ain't quit, bitch. No, sir. Each of us is more than the worst thing that we've ever done. I know what it's like to be in the shadows. It's my dad. He did nothing wrong. It's never too late for justice. You're the only one kid enough to fight for me. If we can look at ourselves closely, we can change this world for the better. 
We all need grace. We all need mercy. Amen. I got my truth back. You gave that to me. And ain't nobody gonna take that from us. All right, so in that particular movie, Brian Stevenson, who is the real life lawyer played by uh, Michael B. Jordan, uh, heads to the Alabama to defend those wrongly condemned or those not able to afford proper representation. And one of his first cases is that of Walter McMillan, who was sentenced to die in 1987 for the murder of an 18-year-old girl, despite evidence proving his innocence. So in the years that follow, Stevenson encounters racism and legal and political maneuverings all the while doing everything he can to tirelessly fight for McMillan's life. So that's what that movie is about, Just Mercy. It's also a book that some of you may be familiar with as well, but it's a great story and a powerful, hope-filled message as well. The second movie that I want to tell you about today, which is similar to that movie is the movie Brian Banks. How many of you have seen this movie? Probably less of you have seen this movie. None of you have seen this movie. Well, it's an inspiring drama. I think it came out in early spring, and it didn't hit the theaters, I don't think, because of all the COVID stuff. And so this movie, though, is a drama based on the real story of a man by the name of Brian Banks. Brian is a respectful son, a great student, and also happens to be this incredible football player. He's got the scouts after him. He's going to hopefully play football in the NFL someday. He's that good. But when he's 16 years old, a girl in his school accuses him of kidnapping her in the school and raping her in the school. He's tried as an adult, and even though he pleads no contest, which was really bad legal advice from his lawyer, and thinking he would just end up on probation, guess what? Brian is sent by the judge to prison for five years. After those five years, when he's finally released, Brian is determined to prove his innocence and to clear his name from the California Sex Registry. Again, here's a short kind of trailer to give you a better idea what this movie is all about. Let's watch. Boyhood dreams got no place in a man's life. You need to concentrate on getting employed. Forget about football. When I was young, it was hard to see a way out. Football gave me an option. Brian Banks with the tackle. By the time I was 16, I had the attention of the NFL. The sky is the limit for this kid. So what happened? Why don't you play anymore? Brian Banks was 16 years old when he was accused of a crime he did not commit. He lost 11 years of scholarship. He was prevented from playing football. The system is broken. We have 10 months to clear his name. If in that time they do not overturn your conviction, you'll be a prisoner again. I need something big, something extraordinary. Yeah. It's extraordinary that I'm still here. Yeah. I'm still standing. Yeah. You ever been locked up? It nearly killed me. How did you survive it? Almost did. And I met a man who showed me a different way. All you can control in life is how you respond to life. I know what I have to do now. My man is innocent! They tried to call me out. You think you'll get another shot at the NFL? Trust me, we got a plan. It's not I am innocent. And the truth matters. I know the system doesn't care about me. But you didn't deserve what happened to you. Brian's gonna run out of time. It's not over. I'll tell you what's extraordinary. I am. All right, so I apologize. That came out last August. I remember thinking about preaching on it back then, but didn't. Um, Brian Banks, another movie that touches on some of the same very issues. Now, as a brief disclaimer, both movies are rated PG-13, and there is some language in the films that we don't ne necessarily condone, but I would just encourage you to overlook these words, the few that there are in the movies, and to see the broader message 
that is on display in each of these films. Again, they are very powerful depictions of what I want to talk to you about today. So what is the message that God has laid upon my heart to share? Here's what God has laid upon my heart to make you aware of this morning. Now, I don't know if you've ever noticed it or not, but when you go to the gas station and you look at the pump, if you've ever paid attention before, filling up your gas tank, you see this little imprint upon that gas pump. It looks something like this. Here's one that shows what's, uh, what you see from the Michigan, um, from Michigan as well as Indiana. And what is that for? Does anybody know what that's for? Tax, okay. What else, Jerry? Okay. There you go. Anybody else? You guys are, yeah, you guys are right on. Um, it's there to assure us, though, those things, but also that the pump is working correctly, right? That the weights and measures of the pump is working correctly. It's there to remind us that the Michigan Department of Agriculture is holding that gas station accountable, right? That's why it's there. Here's something else that I think we recognize. Some of you may have already noticed this. What is this? This is an antique. What is this? It's a food scale, right? And so Shane was joking this morning that he was going to, I, I was going to weigh his coffee. Um, um, why do we need one of these? Okay, but lo why do we need these at the stores, right? They have these at stores, something like this, not exactly this anymore, right? So that we pay the right price for the, what, bananas, right? They weigh the, do they still weigh bananas? Yes, yeah, so they, you want to uh, have the right price be um, what you get charged for at the grocery store. And so if it's not the right price, if it's the wrong sort of scale, or if the scale is tainted in any sort of way, what happens? You pay more than you should, or you pay less. In either case, it's not fair, is it? It's not fair at all. And yet has been fairly made clear to me these last few months, this very thing, injustice by means of unfair weights, unequal measures, is still happening every single day. Now here's the thing, here's my heart this morning. Please hear me. This is not based on scientific study of any sort. I did not interview any of you or anything like that. But let me just say this. I have a pretty good grasp of who you are. I know most of you very, pretty well. And here's what I would say. Here goes. 95% of you, maybe even 100% of you, I hope. That would be awesome. 100% of you are not racist. I hope you're happy to hear that. 95 to 100 percent of you are not racist. Now, the word racist or racism is a difficult word to define. It's changed over the course of history. But when I mean racism, what am I talking about? I mean like hatred towards somebody of another race. Okay, there's prejudice and all that kind of stuff in there, and I think a lot of us are prejudiced. We want to be around people just like us. I get that. But I'm talking about hatred towards another race. Let me say it again, 95 to 100% of you are not racist. So for me to preach a sermon on racism, I think would be a waste of time. Why do I know this? How do I know this? Because I've seen some of you welcome the Hispanic person who walked into the church. I've seen some of you welcome the black man or the black woman walk through the doors of this church. Doesn't happen always or often, but it does happen. I've seen it. And I see how you warmly greet them and love on them just like they're anybody else. So preaching a message of racism or against racism in this church would be a complete, I think, waste of time. That would be like preaching to the choir, you might say. But I believe there's another reason, another thing that we need to talk about this morning. And it has to do with this idea of racial and social injustice that seems to be more and more prevalent. It's on the news every night if we watch the news, and sometimes we just have to turn the news off. I get that. It's not everywhere, but it's still out there. And these two movies especially depict the real 
life racism that's happening all over this country in different places. And maybe Michigan's better than other places, but uh, Alabama has a way to go, you might say, when it comes to some of this sort of thing. So I want to talk to you for just the next 10 or 15 minutes about this injustice, because injustice should matter to you and I. It should matter. And so here's why it should matter. According to God's word, here's some things that we learn about injustice. And I'm not going to read to you uh, certain stories and that sort of thing. I just want to read to you like six or seven different short scriptures that talk and share about God's heart when it comes to injustice. So just listen to these words. Psalm 33, 5 says this, God loves righteousness and justice. The earth is full of the steadfast love of the Lord. Psalm 106.3 says this, Blessed are they who observe justice, who do righteousness at all times. Turning to the book of Proverbs, we get an even deeper understanding of God's heart. Listen to these words from Proverbs 11.1. 1. A false balance... Is an abomination to the Lord, but a just weight is his delight. Proverbs 16, 11. The Lord demands accurate scales and balances. He sets the standard for fairness. Proverbs 17, 15 says this. He who justifies the wicked and he who condemns the righteous are both alike an abomination to the Lord. He who justifies the wicked, who condemns the righteous. Both of those stories in those movies are both alike an abomination to the Lord. And then finally in Proverbs 20.10, unequal weights and unequal measures are both alike an abomination to the Lord. So while just offering a brief survey of God's word, I think we have a pretty clear message here. God hates it. He hates it. When justice fails and injustice prevails. Would you agree that God hates it when justice fails and injustice prevails? That is not a good thing. Now let me be upfront with you. Even though both Just Mercy and Brian Bakes depict a black man and the injustice that they receive on the part of the court system here in the United States, I also need to tell you that Injustice in various forms takes place amongst all races and all ethnicities and all genders. This fight for justice, this call for reform is for all skin colors. There are plenty of Caucasian or white people like you and I who have been wrongfully convicted, and sent erroneously to prison or to death row. So regardless of the color of your skin, doesn't matter. God hates it when justice fails and injustice prevails. It's an abomination to him. He hates that. Now, for too long, as I've already hinted at, I've been pretty blind to all this. Like, I don't pay attention to this. And you know the reason why I don't pay attention to this? It's because I've had a pretty good life. I've had a pretty easy life. I don't know what your life has been like over the course of your entire life, but I've had a pretty easy life. The only time I've stood in front of a judge, the only time, was when I got caught speeding too many times before I turned to age 18. Lots of tickets. And I stood in front of the judge in Mount Pleasant when I was going to college. And I listened to that judge say, you know what, son? You're losing your license for six months. I deserved it. I had a lead foot. And I deserved to lose my license. There was no injustice in that particular instance whatsoever. Well, a few months ago, in that video that I wanted you to watch, probably back in May... Um, I urge you to listen to the words of T.D. Jakes, who is a very prominent black preacher from the Potter's House down in Dallas, Texas. You've certainly seen him before on TV, I'm sure of it, if you've not listened to him before. But in that message that he shares, a back and forth kind of interview, um, I was struck by several things that he said in that video, and I wish we had time to watch all of it. We don't, but I picked out four minutes so kind of a heavy, video-heavy morning for us. But I want you to watch these next four minutes and pay attention to what T.D. Jakes says about some of the injustices and what we 
as white people can actually do about it. So the person interviewing him is Carl Lentz, who is a pastor of Hillsong Church in New York City, and he does a great job in this interview throughout. But he's a white guy, like we are. And he says, what can we white people do to help fight the injustices that you, as a black person, not everywhere, but in some parts of our country, who are discriminated against because of the color of their skin. So I want you to watch this for four minutes. Watch these words in this interview with T.D. Jakes. Let me tell you what you can't do. We don't need another foot washing ceremony. My feet are clean. We don't, we're not trying to get you to come wash our feet. You know, we have had all of those ceremonies to the point, you know, that I feel like I got a manicure when I go to church. <laughs> we don't, funny. we don't. We don't need that. We, 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 don't, we don't even need you to feel guilty or shame for history that it wasn't you. That's not it's the important. point. Yeah. That's not the point. You, you weren't the, the people that were singing above the slaves. And you can't help what your ancestors did no more than I can help what mine did. That's not, that's not what I'm after. When you speak up and break the silence, when you stop allowing a black issue to be a black, black issue, issue and allow it to be an American issue. My issue. Yeah, it's my issue too. There is no way in the world that I could have seen somebody put their knee in your neck. What are we talking about? Not. There is no way in the world, I promise you, that I could stand by and watch somebody press their knee into your neck till you bled and died on the street and not come to you. And it has nothing to do with being white or black. It has everything to do with being human. And the only thing we're asking for is just human dignity. I, it, this isn't even about being washed in the blood. This is about being a human. This is about respect for human life. This is about uh, all souls are mine. That, that God so loved the world, not not God so loved the Christians or God so loved the Republicans or God so loved the white folks or God so loved no God so loved the world that who that whosoever believeth in Him should not perish but have everlasting life. And if God could love me and God lives in you, then how can you say that He dwells in you and you could stand there and watch a grown man cry for his mama? handcuffed, handcuffed, face down. You can't say this time, I feared for my life. Mm -mm. Four police officers standing around doing absolutely nothing. The man is handcuffed like a hog. And you press your knee with your body weight into my neck till you crush me and I'm crying for my mother. We should all be ashamed. We should, we, should, we should all be uncomfortable. We should all be horrified. It is atrocious. What you can do is, is, is it starts with speaking out and speaking to the elected officials and letting, no, no longer letting it be said that the black community is upset. Right, right in my peripheral view, I can see the news above my screen, and, and they've got all of these black people up there because they bring black people in when black people die, and black people talk about it like it's a black person's issue. That, as long as we got that, we got a problem. It ought to be a human issue. I, I, sent, I sent all kinds of food to South America to feed uh, people in Venezuela. And I can't even speak Spanish, but they were hungry. Yeah. And I had some money. Yeah. And we sent food, all kinds of food to feed them. I dug wells in Kenya. Now, I'm not, I'm not Kenyan, but they didn't have any water. They were thirsty. We helped in, 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 in after Katrina, pulling black bodies and white bodies out of the flood, irrespective to who they were. They're just people. And I just, what you can do is love better. What you can do is speak up for God's sake. Say something, write somebody, protest, 
do whatever you can do with whatever you can do. And then on a, on a smaller level, social justice isn't just carrying signs and picketing. Though I have to say this, I have to say that in Charlottesville, it was such an amazing thing that none of the press said anything about that it wasn't just black folks marching in Charlottesville, it was white folks marching too. Our kids need to see you care about us. So all to say, I think in the words of Jake's himself, the story of George Floyd and others is not a racial issue, it's a human issue. Dying the way he died should never happen to anyone regardless of the skin color. And it's sad to me that our country only pays attention to certain things based on the color of somebody's skin. But it has to go beyond that, right? That's what Jake's is saying. It's a human issue. So I've already shared with you how I feel about movies like Just Mercy and Brian Banks. The devil would much rather have me focus on other kinds of movies. Ignore these movies, walk around these sort of issues. Because the devil doesn't want us to fix the divide. But we can't. I can't. Why? Because God hates it when justice fails and injustice prevails. He hates that. So we have to stop turning a blind eye to these sort of things. Instead, we need to heed the advice of Jake's and become better people and to love people better. The kind of people who choose to stay on the right side of the road in order to help out the human being just like the good Samaritan once did, regardless of the color of their skin. So how do we do this? And so I want to just share with you three or four things briefly that we can do to make a difference. One of the most obvious is to make the time to watch movies like Just Mercy and Brian Banks. I was so happy to hear John tell me this morning that he and Jody had watched the movie uh, on Friday night. And I would encourage all of you to watch that movie or Brian Banks or both of them or one of them. Because when we make these sort of movies a regular diet to our other media that we take in on a regular basis, it changes us. In some measure, it changes us. You cannot watch a movie like these two movies and not be changed. It will change your heart. Now, John, I want to embarrass you, but what did you say to me in the first service, or before the first service? You said what? So a movie like that has power to change a mind, um, increase an awareness of something that's happening, maybe that you didn't realize was happening, John, I'm guessing. Um, so when we take in this sort of media, maybe we don't watch them all the time. It can be depressing to take in this sort of media. We have to fill our minds with comedies and laughter and whodunits and other inspiring films. But we do need to make these sort of films a part of our diet. Maybe it's once a month or once every quarter or something like that. Again, I don't like these movies. I really don't. I'd much rather laugh. But God hates it when justice fails and injustice prevails. So we watch these sort of movies. Secondly, take some time to educate yourself. Reading a book about slavery or a book about some other form of injustice that you didn't know that much about before. Education creates an awareness that we wouldn't have otherwise. And so our libraries are filled with books that can educate us in these and other areas of injustice. Thirdly, speak out and speak up. That's what Jake said, right? We don't have to be silent about all these kinds of things. They might not be happening to us individually, but I can assure you they're happening to a Christian brother or sister. They're happening to your neighbor. They're happening to your friend at school. They're happening to your coworker. Let's speak out and speak up for those whose voice is too often, too quiet to hear. Fourthly, perhaps I think even more importantly, let's put our money where our mouth is. Let's prayerfully consider, prayerfully consider donating money or time to a social justice organization. Because here's the deal. Here's the deal. In the American criminal justice system, wealth, not culpability, shapes outcomes. 
I don't know if you agree with me on that, but I think one of the most famous examples of this involves my childhood hero, O.J. Simpson. Love O.J., love the juice. And I wish, well, anyway, won't go there, but O.J., if you remember the story, some of you may remember the story, some of you may not, but he hired the dream team of lawyers, right? Do you remember this? Johnny Cochran, Robert Shapiro, Kardashian, um, uh, I can't think of all the guys. He had like five or six top-notch lawyers. And I got to tell you, there is no way the juice gets off without them. Do you agree with me or not? I mean, he had some great lawyers. Not everybody has those lawyers, right? Wealth determines how easily you get off in certain cases. So, organizations like Brian Stevenson's The Equal Justice Initiative, the one that got Walter McMillan off in the movie Just Mercy, that's a real organization that you can donate money to if you wanted to, because they need money to help fund the legal costs of getting these people off. Also in the book, uh, the, uh, the Guardians by John Grisham, at the very end, he shares the inspiration for this book. It's a fictional book, but it's based largely on a real-life organization called the Centurions. And you can donate to that particular ministry. It's a ministry, it's a nonprofit that needs money to be able to go and help people get off death row who've been put there. And so we can donate our time, our money to organizations that hate the injustice as much as God hates it. So do your research. Those are a couple of them. The EJI, the Equal Justice Initiative, and the Centurion uh, Ministries is another one. Do your research. Find one of those and maybe consider, you know, we send money to kids overseas. My wife and I support two different children through World Vision, and that's awesome. Nothing wrong with that. But what about supporting an organization like this? It seeks the heart of God by seeking after justice. So as God's image bearers, our heart should break for the very kinds of things that break God's heart. And if anything breaks God's heart, it's when the scales of this world are out of whack and injustice is allowed to win the day. This should not happen. It happens. It's sad that it happens. And movies like this make us aware that they're happening on a regular basis. So we can do our part. We can be become a bigger part of the change that we want to see happen. My prayer for you is that you would be impacted by these movies, that you would be impacted by a book by John Grisham, that you would be impacted by what I've said and shared from God's word about God's heart and what makes him angry, and what he considers an abomination. That's my prayer for all of us, that we would be impacted to do something. Let's pray for that today. Father God, change our hearts. Let us not turn a blind eye to injustice whether it's involving a black man or a black woman or a white man or a white woman, it doesn't matter. We've got to get beyond the color of people's skin and see this as human, a human issue. God, help us to be awakened to the change that we want to see happen. Help us to do something. I pray this in Jesus' name. Amen. Your benediction is from 1 Peter 3.12. Peter writes, The eyes of the Lord watch over those who do right. The eyes of the Lord watch over those who do right, and his ears are open to their prayers. God bless you guys. Thank you so much for being here today and listening so well. And... Uh, May God bless you this week. Have a great, great week. We'll be back with another movie next week. See you then.